Information. Q21 answer negative. Q46 satellite link effective. Q9700. The computer readouts available from today. Have them put straight through to me, will you? Yes, sir. Mr. Freeman to see you, sir. All right, Mr. Freeman. But the girl in reception calls me Alec. So? Well, doesn't that inflame you with jealousy? Obviously, it doesn't. Positive identification, 97. Freeman, Alec E. You're here, aren't you? Uh-huh. You must have passed all the tests. All of them. I bet. Keep you a moment, Alec. Trouble? Oh, why else would I send for you? Take a look at this. That's Westbrook Electronics, isn't it? Yeah. What's left of it? Well, what happened? For ten years, there have been setbacks. We've had uh, accidents miscalculations, errors of judgment, and other mishaps. Let's put Westbrook Electronics down to other mishaps. You mean a UFO? Well, there's no proof. So bang goes the Utronic project, just when we thought we really had something to track them down. Now, don't panic, Alec. The Utronic equipment is safe. It wasn't in the building. It's intact, fully tested, and ready for shipment. The breakthrough. Shadow have had Moonbase and the other satellites operational for the past few months. There have been a few UFO sightings, but no interceptions. We've got the teeth. Soon we'll have the eyes. Now, Freeman, you know how important this is to our whole organization. 
Now, the Utronic design team and the equipment are ready to be picked up in Los Angeles and flown here to England. Now, I'm making you responsible for the security of the entire operation. I mean you, personally. Right. Well, it must be quite a while since you landed an SST. Just let's say it's part of the personal service. Shadow Control, this is Seagull X-ray. Confirm arrival, Stevenson Base, Los Angeles, 0835. Takeoff schedule, 1100 hours. Roger, Seagull X-ray. Call Moon Base, will you? Yes, sir. Status check. Target? Affirmative. Magnetic field? Check. Saturation density? Green. Resonator? Affirmative. Code? OK. Displacements? Go. Filters? Check. Fluctuation? Affirmative. Reflex? Excuse me. Right. Shadow control for you, Lieutenant. Right. Lieutenant Ellis. Good morning, Gay. I think I might have some action for you. I want Moonbase put on yellow alert from 1045 to track Seagull X-ray. Now it's carrying shadow VIPs on the Utronic equipment. So let's keep everybody on their toes. We can't afford to take chances. Roger. Joan, announce a yellow alert for 1045. Yes, Lieutenant. And complete the status check. I think this is going to be for real. I'm going to take a break. I'll be back about 10.30. OK. Moon base will be on yellow alert from 10.45 Earth elapsed time. Repeat, 10.45 EET. All space trackers to be fully operational by 10.45 EET. Astronauts to be on standby. Joanna? Be right with you, Lou. No hurry. I want to run a computer check on the interceptor systems in about 10 minutes. Hi, Gay. Hello, Lou. Do you think this could be it, Lieutenant? Looks like it, Lou. An SST traveling at Mach 4 is a pretty tempting target, particularly as it's carrying the new Utronic equipment. So, Mark. So this time it could be real? Yeah, it could be. Well, I guess we could all do with a bit of action. Well, I could do with a cup of coffee. Sure. Thanks. Put Skydiver in the picture. Yes, sir.
Message from Shadow Control, sir. Yellow alert at 10.45. Right. Stevenson Base, this is Seagull X-ray. Liftoff check complete. Liftoff clearance. Roger, Seagull X-ray. You are clear to go. Yeah. 10.45. Right. Brakes off. Airspeed building. One thirty. One forty. One sixty V one. VR. Rotate. This is Moonbase calling Sid. This is Space Intruder Detector. Pass your message. Seagull X-ray carrying VIPs and neutronic equipment is airborne. Track progress of aircraft until further notice. Keep sharp lookout for UFO. Please pass your code so that your instructions can be complied with. Stand by to receive code. Standing by. Thank you. Your code is correct. I have Seagull X-ray on scanners. It is on course. Speed, 1,500 knots. Moonbase computers confirm course correct. Airspeed, 1,500 knots. Right. Maintain tracking. Please check complete, sir. Okay. Steer 042. Steer 042. 042. Maintain present speed. Maintain speed, 40 knots. Red alert. Red alert. UFO 428. 146 green. Got it. 428. 146 green. Speed. Solid. Trajectory termination. Coming up. This is moon base to shadow control. Predictive trajectory termination. North Atlantic. Speed. Solid. Going for intercept. Out. Interceptors. Immediate launch. Interceptors. Immediate launch. Interceptors go. Right. This is moon base to all shadow stations. Moon base to all shadow stations. UFO sighted, 428146 Green will report. Attention all defense systems. This is a maximum security alert. Attention all defense systems. I say again, this is a maximum security alert. Condition red.
one and a half million miles per second. Range, 75 million Hi. miles. Okay, yes. 70 million miles. Maintaining Solate, red, 129046. Right. Trajectory. Still is predicted. Lieutenant, I have green on interceptors one, two, and three. Moon based interceptors. Stand by to set missile control computer. Right. MCC reading 101264110. Missile timing 24906. Missile program completed. Range 8 million miles closing. 7 million miles. Missile firing 5 decimal 4 seconds. skydiver and get me Alec Freeman yes sir gentlemen Miss Lake shadow control have just informed me that a UFO is approaching the North Atlantic I'm afraid we must assume that this aircraft is its target we're going to reduce height in order to gain the advantage of cloud cover this will mean we'll have to reduce speed but of course in the dense atmosphere so will the UFO. Presumably that increases Shadow's chances of intercepting it. Yes, it does. I'd fasten your seatbelts if I were you. UFO entering visual speed range. Radar and visual alert. UFO on radar track speed Mach 5. Thank God for the atmosphere. It's the best protection we have. I have positive radar fix. skydiver now. In position, sir. Right. Stand Five, by. Four, three, two, one, zero. Launch stations. Launch stations. Clear one. One clear. Clear two. Two clear. Ready for takeoff, sir. Okay, lift off stations. Lift Check off boosters. stations. Checking boosters. Circuits. Cut boosters. H pulse circuits okay. Cutting boosters. Relays okay. But let's give a thing. Interlocks engaged. Stabilized gyro. Trigger circuits okay. Right. Stand by for liftoff. Shot of control from Sky One, airborne. Position zero two zero, red. Roger, Sky One. Airspeed down to 600 knots. Right. Lower heat shield. Right. All 
I don't like it. These clouds give about as much cover as a G-string on a belly dancer. Sky one to Seagull X-ray, over. Oh, Peter, am I glad to hear you. What's your position? Right above you. Level off at 20,000. Sky one to Seagull X-ray. Have you four on screen? Closing rapidly. Roger. 10 degrees port. Right. at 12 o'clock. You are the target. Coming into attack. You four went at Cloud Lair. Keep a sharp lookout. Roger. Okay. 
Shall we start? Hello, Nina. Hello, Colonel. How's everything going? Fine. How are things with you, Joan? Fine, sir. Is that your report, Lieutenant? Yes, I think you'll find everything's in order. Sure, I shall. Shall we continue? The, um, spares situation might need reviewing. I'd like to see the level kept about 20% higher. Funny you should say that. Straker asked me to get your ideas on the subject. He had the same idea. Hi, Colonel. Hi, Lou. What sort of times are you making on the interceptor launches, Lieutenant? About 125 seconds flat. That's pretty good. Well, that about wraps it up for this month. I'll report a clean bill of health. Fine. I have a possible sighting. We'll relay details of speed and trajectory. Trace bearing 062415 green. Confirm sighting yellow alert. I repeat, yellow alert. Good luck, Mark. Okay, let's go. of attack coordinates and missile timings as soon as possible. Red alert, red alert. Confirm unidentified flying object. This is Moon Base Control. Red alert. Red alert. Interceptors, immediate launch. Interceptors, immediate launch. Our checks, A OK. Interceptor 2, our checks, A OK. Interceptor 1, our checks, A OK. Switch to radio link 4. Onboard computer wave band 0, 6, 8. Confirm speed 0 decimal sol 8. Bearing 342. 047. That's it. Don't lose it. Based interceptors have the UFO on positive track. Speed sol zero decimal eight. Speed sol zero decimal eight. Bearing three four two zero four seven. UFO maintaining course. Predict interceptors in range fifty one seconds. Control to leader. Get on board. Roger. Missile launch, five seconds. Four, three, two, one. 
zero. Our visual contact with explosion. Detonation positive. Did they get it? I still have a contact, Lieutenant. Double check. Positive. Predict UFO on collision course with interceptors. Impact, 32 seconds. Impact, 14 seconds. Interceptor 1 to base, request new course. 1 to base, request new course. Control to Interceptor 3, alter course to 0, 2, 4, 1, 8, 6. 9 seconds. Interceptor 1 to base, request new course. Control to Interceptor 1, alter course to 0, 2, Two, one, eight. It's too late, Lieutenant. Coming one, coming one. Impact confirmed, interceptor one destroyed. Why, Alec? You've read the report? Yes. An astronaut killed? A UFO through the outer defenses? The report tells me what happened. Now I want to know why. I don't really know. Oh, come on, Alec. I know you better than that. Things happen so fast. Meaning? I can't be sure. Well, look, I'll settle for an educated guess, Alec. The error could have been human. A decision was taken. It could have worked. But the point is, it didn't. Right. I want the personnel concerned. The two surviving astronauts and Lieutenant Ellis back here on the next moon flight. Right. Oh, uh, what happened to the UFO? We lost it in a radar blind spot. But one thing's certain, it landed. Landed? Where? Just about the worst place possible. Somewhere in an area of 50,000 square miles in northern Canada. Everything we got that flies is out looking for it. Grid search. Nothing to report. Okay, Skipper. See you in one hour. No, I'm going around once again. We'll stay alight long enough for one more run. will be at the other end of the universe. Uh, has anyone seen Lieutenant Ellis? She's in Central Park. Thanks. Well, there's one of the lucky ones who'll be back on terra firma tomorrow. If by terra firma you mean Straker's carpet. Rather them than me. Gay, we all took the same chance. Ken was unlucky. These things happen. Nobody's to blame. 
Don't give me that crud, Mazden. Find it. If you need more aircraft, appropriate them. Yes. Yes, I'm giving you the authority. Yes. Right. Right. What now? The moon base personnel are here, sir. Send him in. Oh, look, Alec. I know. I know. You want that UFO located? Yes. Bradley, Waterman, Lieutenant Ellis. I assume you know why you're here. I'd like to say something, sir. As interceptor leader, I want to accept complete and sole responsibility for what happened. Very gallant. Yes, that's a very brave gesture. But out of line. I know what happened. Now I want to know why. You people were selected because of your outstanding character as well as intellect. What went wrong? Anything from those satellite shots? No, sir. Well, keep looking. It's got to be there somewhere. Just crossing the Atlantic seaboard. Speed and altitude are way down. The moon base interceptors must have damaged it. Right. Alert Sky One. That's it. Shadow HQ, Skipper. They've located the UFO. Be right there. I've got the UFO's latest fix, sir. If we steer 042, we should intercept in 18 minutes. Right. Alter course to 042. Give her everything she's got. Yeah, zero for two. Maximum speed. Waterman, I'd like you to begin the computer test while I interview astronaut Bradley. Right. Cigarette? Thank you. Nervous? No. There's no need to be. This is all quite confidential. Please sit. There. This time we'll get it. Range 800 miles, sir. Closing. Launch stations. Launch stations.
Lift off stations. Yes, sir. Good luck. Stand by for liftoff. Leveling off at 10,000. Roger. Sky One Airborne, sir. Thanks. Word association. Ready? Father. Mother. Hot. Cold. Geometry. Variable. Oh, yes, of course. You were a pilot before you became an astronaut. Apple. Teacher. Sun. Moon. Tree. Pine. Hate. Love. Visual contact, closing for attack. One reports a hit, but UFO is turned and is still airborne. Signal all radar stations. Tell the commanders if they lose it this time, they'll answer to me. Get some rest, Alec. You look tired. Shadow control to all radar tracking stations. UFO has been hit, but is still airborne. Did he say anything else? No, just that I'd been cleared, and I was scheduled on the next flight back to the moon. And us? He's the one who needs looking at. Oh, don't worry. You can't hear in that glass case he calls an office. Tell me something. Does Shadow have anyone checking him out? If they did, it would probably be a computer. <laughs> Coming down, sir. Great. When it lands, let me know its exact position.
I don't believe it. Hmm? Oh, no, that's for you. Thanks. Well, the UFO has landed. But this time, we know where. Exact position? Close enough to Lexfield Air Base, Canada, for you to be there by first light tomorrow. Fine. I want them, Alec. I want them alive. I'll do what I can. You'll be the field commander. I'll monitor the whole operation from here. Central control will give you all the details, but the transporter will be loaded and ready for takeoff at 2100 hours. Fine. Oh, uh, one more thing, Alec. Dr. Schroeder has finished with the moon base personnel. His report is quite clear. I'd like you to handle that, too. Right. I'll do it before I leave. This is the way I want it done. Mahogany. Table. Graf. Green. Laugh. Cry. This is an interesting reaction. Watch this carefully. Sunrise. Morning. Black. Black. Bird. Blackbird. Blackbird. Oh, yes, yes, good. A 2.04 second delay. You could see her mind racing. She was consciously avoiding giving the standard answer. White. Look at the stress factor at that point. Five times normal. And your conclusions are based on that? My conclusions are based on eight hours of exhaustive tests, 20 years of experience, and the conclusion formed by the computer. That example was one which I thought even a layman might understand. I'll leave you to it. Come in, come in. Sit down. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to waste time with the details of this report, because you'll be given copies of it. But I'd like to read you its conclusions. One, taking into account the circumstances at the time of detonation, it was clearly the duty of Lieutenant Ellis to decide the type of evasive action to be taken. On that count, Lieutenant Ellis is cleared, provided that the decision was in no way influenced by emotional factors. Which brings us to point two. The three personnel directly concerned were subject to standard psychiatric and psychocomputer tests with the following results. Astronaut Lou Waterman, clear on all counts. Astronaut Mark Bradley, emotion count 0.48 paranormal, clear on other counts. Lieutenant Ellis, stress factor 1.28 paranormal. Emotion count 0.35 paranormal, clear on other counts. Three, these results are attributed to an emotional attachment between Lieutenant Ellis and astronaut Bradley. It ends with a confidential recommendation as to what action should be taken. Well, we'll just have to hope that this thing sorts itself out. Meantime, Strake has given you separate postings. Bradley, you'll report to Moon Base. And me, sir? Shadow Headquarters, Earth. Well, everything's lined up with the Air Force. You'll get their fullest cooperation. I'll be on my way. Oh, Alec. Uh, who are you taking with you? Does it matter? Oh, no, except that I hadn't seen the list of personnel. It includes Mark Bradley and Lieutenant Ellis. Your decision? My decision, without the aid of a computer. They'll be back inside three days to take up their new postings. Paul has just landed at Lexfield, Canada, sir. Fine, fine. Shadow mobiles one, two, and three proceed to search down. Airfield Perimeter.
other mobiles are on their way, sir. Good. Visual contact. Shadowmobile two in position, sir. Shadowmobile three in position. All three mobiles are in position, sir. Good. Send one in. Which one, sir? The one in the best position. Standard procedure. Control to Shadow Mobile 3. Close in for final assault. Roger, control. Should be able to see it any second. Have visual contact about 300 yards ahead. Any sign of movement? No, nothing. We're going in closer. Right. Take it easy. to control. We're under attack. Head back to the ridge. We're still under fire. They seem to be using some sort of... SM3, can you hear me? Come in, SM3. Radio and tracking link negative. They must have been hit. Send the next one in. I know the risk. Send it in. This is control to Shadow Mobile One. Close in on UFO. Roger. This is Colonel Freeman. We must assume SM3 is non-operational. Stop just below the top of the ridge and proceed on foot. I repeat, proceed on foot. Understood. Forces in position and standing by, sir.
Okay. Find out. Two fifty yards from UFO. Closing in. They're closing in, sir. Day. Yes, they're flying the alien back to HQ now. You all right? I'm fine. Mark, there's something I must tell you. After Mobile 3 was hit, Freeman told me to send another one in. Mobile 2 was in a better position. It's okay. 
I was glad of the action. Don't you understand what I'm saying? I risked your life to prove a point. You did it to prove that Straker and the computers were wrong. the same situation we've experienced before. The alien was breathing a liquid containing a bioacrophilic compound, imparting the usual green tint to the face and neck. The hair was unaffected, and the eyes had protective shells. Oh, we've managed to revert the respiration to normal atmosphere. Successfully? Five hours is not long enough to tell. It's long enough to tell us that we're dealing with a comparatively young alien. Past experience has shown us that once they breathe our atmosphere, they deteriorate to their true age. I want to see if I can get anything out of him, Doctor. How soon can he be ready? Look, we're crossing new physiological frontiers. How can I say? Well, I, I suppose he's as ready now as he'll ever be. Right, Doctor. to be humanoid and highly intelligent. The biosensor tells us his eyes and ears are in excellent condition. Computer reports indicate he's in perfect health. There must be some way we can communicate. You've been interrogating him for 43 minutes. How much longer? Why? We've got to remove the barrier compound from his hair to assist oxygen absorption. All right, all right. Now, let's go over it once again. The answers are needed to certain questions. I'm asking you to cooperate. It's no good, Alec. He either can't or doesn't want to understand. There's no alternative. I'm going to try one of the new anodynes to break down his resistance. Which do you recommend, Doctor? Well, GL7 is the most effective in my experience, but... What in this case? Well? I can't guarantee the result. It could be dangerous. How dangerous? Who knows? But the decision... And the responsibility must be yours. Well, your reactions are all right. You heard that clearly enough. All right, Doctor. drug will lower your resistance. It's no use fighting it. You must help us. You must cooperate. Pulse rate increasing. Still increasing.
No, thanks. I'd like you to accept this. We've worked together a long time, Alec. Maybe too long. Can't we talk about it? There's not much to say. It's a difference in temperament. You think I wanted him to die? It was a calculated risk. It's not only that. You make all your decisions based on cold logic, computer predictions. I wonder what it's going to be like in 20 years' time. Will the computers take over completely? Why don't you ask them? They seem to have all the answers, even now. We build them, program them, and they tell us what we're going to think before we know it ourselves. Well, you better make that phone call. I'll sleep on it. Straker, it's for you, Alec. Freeman. Well, when did you find this out? Well, you know what it means, don't you? Right. No, no. Now leave that with me. Yeah. Bye. Mark Bradley. Important? He thinks it is. Well, it looks like you were right. You and your computers. <sighs> oh, by the way, Alec. Uh, would you tell Lieutenant Ellis and Astronaut Bradley that they're to return to Moon Base immediately and assume their normal duties? That's not what the report recommended. Uh, not the first report, no. But this report analyzed the flight paths, and it shows that had normal procedure been followed, we would have lost all three interceptors. You mean her decision wasn't influenced by emotion? You tell me. See you. Position, Captain. IGR 140288. Right. Take her up eight fathoms. Prepare surface stations. Low tanks one through six. Yes, sir. Steady at eight fathoms, sir. Right. in sight. Prepare to surface. Surface stations. Maintain vigilant radar. Watch for surface vessels. Where are we, Lieutenant? Uh, right here, Captain. Fine. Well, we've made good time. Hover cruise at 20 knots, steer a course 126. Steer 126, speed 20 knots.
Tracking aerial set up, sir. Right. This is skydiver to control. We have surfaced. In position to check the satellite. Roger, skydiver. What's happening, Captain? Well, I've got a feeling it's pretty important. Commander Strake is playing this one close to his chest. <laughs> the signal. It looks good. I have a radar sighting bearing 279. Right. Looks like a freighter. Take it down. Yes, sir. Dive, dive, dive. <laughs> Skydiver to shadow control. Shadow control. We had to crash dive to avoid a surface vessel. What was it? A freighter. But I'm sure they didn't see us. Before we dive, we did manage to pick up the satellite. Its orbit looked good. Thank you, Skydiver. I'll tell Commander Straker. How far is it now? Around eight miles. Do you think it'll work? Well, I think so. But then I always was a, an eternal optimist. Four minutes, Doctor. Right. Check area latitude. Ten seconds to transmission check, sir. Smack on the nose. The first transmissions are coming through, sir. Signal strength 012147. What's the distortion? Minimal. Decimal 072. Fine. Keep tracking. Dr. Young was a little put out at not being able to see the results. Yes. Security is a word I don't like to throw at a man who goes out of his way to cooperate. Maybe we could send him a couple of prints. Let's wait and see if there's anything on the tape to print. Take it from nearly 500 miles out. Fantastic quality.
a real breakthrough. See this one here, range 490 miles, magnification times 250. It's like a helicopter shot. Well, I'm convinced. We'll throw everything we've got into getting this project approved. How's it going, Kelly? I'm pretty well, Commander. In fact, the test run was so successful, there are very few modifications needed. Well, that's quite a setup. When can I tell the commission we'll be ready to go? Three, four weeks. We just have to check out the link systems. Good. That's what I wanted to hear. Very pretty. But don't pull a bulldozer job in here, Straker. I won't have to. Nice to see you again. Gentlemen. The Financial Committee, the Astro Space Commission is in session. Now, you all know Commander Straker. And by the billion dollar cost estimate beside it, you will have realized that the first project on the agenda is his. Thank you, General. Gentlemen, this drawing shows a standard B-142 space probe. Now, the project will use a modified version of this spacecraft. I'd like you to notice the domed structure here. Now, from this cross-section, you'll see that it incorporates a device which, in layman's terms, can best be described as an electronic telescope. The principle is very simple. It is a telescope which, instead of using light, operates with a stream of electrons. And it's capable of scanning with a magnification of up to times 2,500. Lieutenant Masters. These shots of the Earth were taken from an orbit between 450 and 500 miles out. The electron telescope scans an area, radios the information back to Earth, and the impulses are transmitted into these pictures. And as you can see, the definition is as good as any normal photograph. The tracking and homing mechanisms are also very elaborate, but they've been fully tested and will enable the probe to home in on the planet from two million miles out. I'm sorry to disillusion you, Straker, but I can get you great shots of the Earth with a two-dollar camera from a balloon. Yes, I should have been more explicit, Jim. By the planet, I didn't mean Earth. The purpose of the project, gentlemen, is to enable the probe to track and follow a UFO to its origin. To home in and get high-definition close-ups of the alien planet. Now, my project is to launch a standard or a modified B-142 space probe and place it into a parking orbit around the moon. 
Shadow don't have those kind of facilities. No. We would have to use NASA for the launch. Now, the telescope and the electronics are still on the secret list, so they would have to be fitted by moon-based astronauts after the probe had been placed in a park in orbit. set. Well, listen, I'm uh, thinking of taking Keith Ford with me to Moonbase. Good idea. You're going to need all the help you can get. Yes. Well, listen, Alec, you'd better keep all Earth lunar communication down to a minimum. Sure. What's the situation on the launch? The launch? Well, I think we can safely leave that with NASA. Continues at T minus four hours, 32 minutes, eight seconds. Missile power. Go. Water system. Go. Fuel system. Go. Elementary. Go. T minus three minutes. We have green on all readouts. T minus 60 seconds. T plus 65. 18 miles down. It looks good. NASA reports the launch is successful, sir. Right.
Moon base control to lunar module, switch to automatic LLS, we'll bring you in by radio beam. Touchdown, minus 20 seconds. Right. Oh, you two go along. Paul, let's go to control. I want to check on that space probe report. Hello, Commander. Lieutenant, Nina, Joan. How's the flight? Very smooth, thank you. How's everything here? Fine. Well, Lieutenant, do you have the space probe report? Oh, good, good. Apogee zero decimal one two four below requirement, but we can easily correct it. I've uh, worked out a rough schedule for the astronauts. We understand the probe is to be modified in space. Well, this is great. Well, we'll have to go through it together, of course. I did say it was a rough schedule, sir. Excuse me, sir. security clampdown, no one on Moonbase knows the purpose of Project Discovery, as it has been codenamed. But I do know how hard some of you have worked on it. As you know, a modified B-142 space probe has been placed into a parking orbit around the moon. Now, the first phase is to fit specialized equipment into the probe. This equipment has already been shipped to Moonbase from Earth. Phase two is to maneuver a UFO into a position where the probe can be activated into a flight pattern which will enable it to follow the alien back to its origin. When the probe gets within two million miles of its target, it will start to transmit. With luck, we should get the first close-up shots of another world. It will be our first step in bringing the fight back to the alien planet. Thank you. An exciting situation, Lieutenant. Yes, it is. Look, you've got to get things set up as fast as possible. Right. Uh, who's going out in the probe? Colonel Foster and Lieutenant Masters. control to lunar module your flight pattern is go for rendezvous right confirm one decimal four zero two two four one seven roger control we have visual contact we're in position Onboard computer reads go for spacewalk. We have green on all systems. Moon base control to lunar module. Confirm go for spacewalk.
Send out the camera on my signal. Back to board satellite. Condition green. Stage one complete. Control to space team. Roger. Great work, Paul. Pass my congratulations onto your team. I've asked you all here to explain the next and most vital phase of the operation. Now, the space probe is in orbit. The equipment has been installed and fully tested. Lieutenant Ellis? The uh, problem is to force a UFO into an orbit complementary to the space probes. Then we can activate the tracking systems on the B-142 and enable it to latch on to the UFO. This will involve scheduling the interceptors very precisely. We've made a computer study of UFO approaches, and the general pattern is marked, as you can see. Now, Lieutenant Ellis has compiled an interceptor schedule, but a lot of the decisions will have to be made on the spot. Does that mean we have to play this one by ear? Right. Isn't that dangerous? It involves a certain risk, Colonel. A calculated risk, Lieutenant based on a careful weighing of human factors as much as logic. Well, all we have to do now is wait for a UFO. Red alert, UFO bearing 142 blue, UFO maintaining course. This is control, I have a red alert. I repeat, a red alert. Have UFO on positive track, 142 blue. Speed, Sol 8 decimal 35. 140, 139. Sit has just confirmed. It's coming in on the predicted flight path. Good. Well, she's all yours, Lieutenant. This is control to interceptors. Immediate launch. Repeat. Immediate launch. Right, let's go.
this mission is. Your controller will be Lieutenant Ellis. Flight plans will be relayed by Lieutenant Ford. UFO maintaining course. Speed Sol minus 8.35. UFO maintaining course and speed. Stand by for onboard computer read in. 00102. 1319 0124 input N. Roger control. UFO maintaining course. Bearing 142 blue. Range 18 million miles. Seventeen million miles. Entering area red, zero eight one. There it is. It's changing course. You for entering area red, zero eight four. Speed, sol eight decimal three seven. We'll have to readjust the schedule. Right. Compute for new flight plan. Right, sir. Control to intercept and stand by for new flight plan. 042-148-2148. Increase speed to Sol. One decimal, one two seven. Leader to two and three. Alter course to two one four eight. Roger, leader. Interceptors losing contact, sir. We've got to turn it. If we use a detonation here. UFO will be forced to swing away onto this sort of a course. Tell the interceptors to explode a missile in area blue. One, two, eight. Control to interceptors. Break formation. We'll relay new flight plans. Control to interceptors. This our timing, one five decimal one eight seconds. Thank you, Control. Commencing missile sequence. Firing minus five decimal two seconds. Positive. It's altered course. UFO entering area blue one three two. Maintaining speed. Crossing into blue one three three. It's coming round just right. It's accelerating, sir. Decimal three eight. Eight decimal three nine. You have to use a second missile, sir. Are you sure? Yes. Right. Compute it. Yes, sir. Well. Missile in area blue two seven should do it. Order the missile launch. Listen. Missile timing one zero four zero one eight eight two six. Roger. Detonation confirmed, sir. UFO veered to new course. Three zero one. Compute B one four two. 
will link up in four, three seconds. Baker. How do you feel? Fine, thanks. Uh, how about a cup of coffee? Yes, I'd like that. How do you like your coffee? No sugar. to Project Discovery. Cheers. You know, I want to thank you, Gay, for all the hard work you put into this project and the long hours. You know, I think, I think you push yourself a little bit too hard. You're doing a fine job, Gay. A man's job, but you don't have to do it any better because you're a woman. And don't ever forget, you're a very attractive girl. Thanks for the coffee. And thank you. Lieutenant? Colonel Foster? Sir. When do we leave? 1800 hours tomorrow, sir. Good. Let me give you a piece of advice, Paul. Don't ever judge a situation by the end of a conversation. Lunar module takeoff, minus 18 minutes. I just come in to say thank you, girls. When will the first pictures be through, sir? Well, the experts tell me four months, so let's hope that they're worth waiting for. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Lieutenant. Goodbye, Commander. Okay. Next time you're on Earth furlough, drop in and see me. Yes, I will. Coming through now, sir. Right. Feed it through the decoder straight into printout. Right, sir. the preliminary report in 24 hours. Yes, sir. We've got the answers, Alec. We've got the answers. Commander? I did say 24 hours, Kelly. Yes, sir, but we hadn't had time to type up a report. And give it to me verbally. There was a fault in the device. Yes, sir. The range and magnification on each shot wasn't transmitted. 
And just what is that supposed to mean? That means, except for superfluous detail, these shots tell us very little. Look, what are you trying to sell me, Kelly? Well, look at that. Look at that detail. But it must tell you something. Yes, but was it taken from 500 or 100 miles? With a magnification of 1 or 1,000? Oh, come on. Look, if I take a picture of a, of a girl from 3 feet or 100 yards, I can still see it's a girl. I want to show you something, Commander. Now, whatever the range, that's a shot of the alien planet. A close-up of the surface. Yes. And I'm no expert. But that must be some form of vegetation. Some form of vegetation, you think? You could be right. Well, why don't we take another look? Now, let's pull back. You'll notice the curvature of the horizon. Well, surely from that we can work out an approximation of the overall size. Let's pull back a little more. What is this, Kelly? Some sort of joke? You said earlier, Commander, you could recognize a girl from three feet or a hundred yards. What about when the shot is from 30 inches, with a magnification varying from zero to 10,000? Hello, Commander. Lieutenant? Thank you. You can relax now. Uh, hold it there a moment, will you, Lieutenant? Magnification zero times ten, one hundred, a thousand. Not the most flattering of pinups, nor the best way to spend a furlough. Thanks for all your help, Gay. Pleasure. Goodbye, Commander. Lieutenant. Yes. I'm beginning to see the problem. I'd like you to have a look at that monitor. What would you say this is, Commander? Well, before your demonstration, I would have said a lava formation of some kind. Actually, it's a section of fractured polystyrene. It's incredible. Here's another. From the structure in the center, it could be a building. In fact, Commander, it, it's a grain of pollen. Another shot which could well be taken for a strange rock formation. Yes, I have to agree. Puffed wheat, sir. Without knowing details of range and magnification, the lava flow becomes a piece of shattered polystyrene, magnification times 2155. A pollen grain becomes a futuristic building, and a grain of puffed wheat, a rock formation. Tell me, how are these shots produced? Well, microphotography is well established, but the secret is three-dimensional effect, the depth of focus. It's been known for 25 years, but it needs development. So, while well, we've all been looking into outer space, men like you have been sitting on this, inner space, your pet project. Yes. It's a vast area, almost completely unexplored. But I believe it'll give us the answers to some of the basic questions about the universe. And even life itself. Oh, well, maybe we've all been looking the wrong way. You know, when you really think about it, everything in this office, every object, even a speck of dust contains billions of particles. And each particle is made up of millions of atoms. The whole universe within these four walls. I walk along a beach, stand with millions of grains of sand beneath my feet. Is everything we know, this office, our world, the vastness of space itself, inside one grain of sand on another beach, on another world, in another universe, space is infinite, both ways, outward and inward. 
You can tell Kelly he'll get his appropriation. Maybe more than he expects. I get the picture. A greatly magnified picture, General. Thank you.